This is Catch the Drift. This is Bishop Omar Maggot. Hey, Bishop. How are you? Oh, I'm good today. As long as, long as I see you, I'm always fine. <laughs> and today we have Duffy. I'm even better. I know. I know. <laughs> we have the famous, the, the absolute, wonderful, beautiful, precious gift for Dallas and all Aww, over the world. Thank DJ you. Duffy. Thank you. You're Thank y'all for having me. I'm really oh, excited to be here. No, you, you, here. you are you are a trendsetter. <laughs> uh, people who know you know that your world has been this kind of whirlwind of, yeah. of taking control and doing what you do. It is amazing. And we are excited that you are part of this, uh, this conversation. But you are really uh, a trendsetter. Thank in you. In so many ways. Thank I you. I mean, you know. I'm a bishop, but I know DJ though. Oh, I was about to say, how you know now? <laughs> well, well I've, I've found some, some ways. You, know. you heard around. I heard, I heard about you. And it's a good thing. But Megan, I don't know if you know how much uh, she has been you know, kind of on the cutting edge of not only the music scene, but just she has a presence that has really taken off in so many ways in Dallas, but all over the world. I mean, now... We know you, but the whole world knows you. So how do you feel about being this trailblazer? I mean, I, I just feel really blessed and um, lucky and um, proud of myself for following a dream that really, you know, at the time I felt like not many people believed in. And so now to see my myself in all of these female DJs around Dallas, it's, it's amazing. I was looking at this uh, video. It's one of my favorite videos. You know, one of my favorite videos, other than the gospel. Uh, but I saw a video, man, and all of these female DJs that are in Dallas now, which which amazed me because I didn't know, you know, that they had. It was almost they were from different radio stations, from different, and they were and they were all like, we have to have a unified voice, da da da. And I thought in my mind, this are they? Are you, these got to be some proteges. Or yeah, not, you know, they had just. But it was that was a beautiful. It's thing. It's amazing because when I started DJing, I was familiar with one, maybe two female DJs in the city, none of them doing the nightclubs. So for me to go from DJing in my home in front of my one-year-old to DJing in the clubs in Dallas and then go from DJing from 10 o'clock to, you know, ending the nights with the big celebrities and the Mavericks and uh, the Cowboys in the building and really getting recognition, um, that was a big deal. And I think a lot of girls who were just there at the club just hanging out looked and saw something that they could see themselves doing. And, and it's so cool. Even a girl that used to to style me for the club she's now a dj in the club yeah. so it's just amazing yeah yeah go ahead Megan. i know i can talk all day i know you saying hey bishop i'm, I'm gonna let you in i just want to bishop you know me. i feel like i feel like bishop used to sketch for drip to basically get his groove on with hip-hop and rap. I mean, Bishop, when you talk about serious stuff, it's he's it's just it's like, it's like, oh, I love his music. And I'm like, really? I mean, yeah, we're going to get down to business. But, you know, people got to know they that, do. that, but that I agree with you. Is, a, is, a, is, a, is a unique talent. And I'm being serious. She's a unique talent, a unique gift, and has a unique voice. Yes. Yeah, I didn't see many DJs like myself, not even outside of Dallas. Like the way um, that I do my shows is DJing and then getting up on the on the DJ booth and dancing. A lot of people um, in the hip hop community didn't quite get it. But where I actually got that from was the EDM scene where um, DJs that do the big festivals who get paid millions of dollars a year, they get up on the DJ booth and they throw cakes at the audience and they, they spray in water guns and they, and they do things on top of the DJ booth. And I, I was see. like, I don't see any hip hop DJs doing that. So you know what? I'm going to do that and I'm going to bring it to the show and to the club. And, you know, I would see people in Dallas be like, what is this girl doing? She looks crazy. But then they would go like, hey, then they would get excited, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so a great sense of creativity. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I mean, don't take me wrong. But, I mean, Bishop, you know, that's why we have you here, Duffy, because we love absolutely what you've made with yourself you know yeah. and I guess for me I'm always um, very interested and that's in a way with you know for Catch for Drip it's always I'm always fascinated to learn how people got to where they are especially when they're at the top of their game because mm -hmm. only so few get to the top of their game so I'm always interested in finding out what helped them get to the top of their game because you know what people listening to us we have um, 
we have many, many Duffies who tomorrow, you know, um, so I would like for them to be able to learn. And even those who are not going to want to, you know, be in the DJ world, but they're going to want to be into something else, but still be at the top of the yeah. game. I want everybody listening to be able to just be like, I want for you to share with us, right? So I guess um, if I were to ask you, how, how far do you trace back whatever helped you? What do you think, first of all, helped you the most? I can tell you exactly what it is. Um... If you were to ask me what really played a big part and made me who I am today, I would say I would trace it all the way back to when I was a six-year-old, seven-year-old. My mom started teaching me how to play basketball. And then my dad started teaching in a nice way. And then my dad, my military father, started training me to play basketball. <laughs> and it was no longer like fun and learning to like really training me. And my daddy would push me to a point where I didn't think I could go. And so he kind of showed me how strong I was, how even when sometimes I felt like I couldn't go anymore, my mind is sometimes stronger than my body. Mm. And so I learned that at a very young age to be mentally tough. And I would take that with me throughout life, throughout obviously throughout sports and you know, going from being the seven-year-old playing to then playing Division One college basketball, winning championship rings, like, it takes discipline, it takes hard work, it takes really giving your all into something that you want to do, and I would... I would implement that in anything else I do in life. And so the day I decided that, you know, working at Car Enterprise was not for me, I want to do something with my life, and I decided that DJing would be it. I just put my all into it, and I use all those fundamentals of hard work and dedication and commitment. You know, I use all of those things to help me, you know, learn how to DJ and then eventually get into the clubs. Because you see, uh, Bishop, this is what's so interesting to me because mm -hmm. the reason why I always love um, for people like um, you, Duffy, and when I say like you, what I mean by that is beautiful women, right? Mm -hmm. You command, you're, you know, like you're, you've got a presence. I, I, I love it. Me, I Thanks. love strong women, first of all. But I mean. <laughs> so anyway, um, you just, you know, and, but because you're so beautiful and I use my butt very carefully, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I don't want is so many other women or young girls right now watching Duffy and they think maybe, oh, I'll get to the top just if I am like Duffy and I twerk and yeah. I have my nice hair and I have my beautiful, you know, smile, mm -hmm. uh, my sex appeal. Yeah. I love that you're here and debunking all of that and yes. saying, no, hard work, discipline, yes. all of that stuff. I mean, that to me is dope, yes. right? And that's why it's important to have people like you. Right. And that's why we, you know. And, a, and, and an interesting story, like I was saying back to uh, when I first started the nightclubs and taking the getting on top of the DJ booth and dancing, I started that at the very beginning of my DJ career, but I quickly stopped because I realized that that was kind of taking away the attention from my skills and to learn more. Interesting. Yeah, so... I really kind of cut that out um, a lot in my shows. It was more of, you might see me do it every here and there, but it was not an every night thing. It was not a part of my DJing. It was not until DJing on tour with French Montana did I look around and I said, like, I've made it. I've worked hard to get here. I can get up on this DJ booth and dance and shine because now you know that my hard work and my talent and my fun side and my dancing, like, I, I've earned it. It's not a gimmick, you know. I've kind of worked my way to be able to do that. So th there was a period of time where I stopped because I didn't want to, to, to make girls think that if you get on the DJ booth and dance but don't know how to DJ that you would get booked because that was kind of a stigma. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't want people to think that. I wanted them to know, no, I'm, I'm actually DJing. I actually do this. And, you know, it, I didn't get this job because I'm dancing, you know. Although sometimes it's hard because, oh, yeah. um, although sometimes it's hard because I look at it for my, even myself, um, I remember that I went through a time of my life where I just didn't want, I was a very strange cr creature for a while there because, so my first company, you know, we raised like uh, Series A, like close to a couple million, couple million dollars and five million dollars, whatever. And... At some point, I'm like, oh, some of these investors, they're just interested in hanging out. And I'm just like, they're not, you know. So eventually, I'm just like, I'm cutting all of that out. The, the butterfly, the, you know, like uh, the social butterfly part of me is gone, is going. Mm. But that's also, that also was one of the most miserable times of my life. Because yeah. 
it is me. I love to be, you know, with people. Yes. I love making people laugh. I mean, I'm the, you know, if if my friends are going to do a party and I'm not available, there's no party. <laughs> right. The date is changing. <laughs> That's too. how it was. And then I became this person that I'm just like, no, I'm not going to do that anymore because uh, why can't they hear me? So sometimes, Bishop, I don't know, if, I don't know, maybe you can enlighten us. D- why, why is it that women have to sometimes cut out those, those of, and I believe all women have a sex appeal in them, why do we have to cut it out to be hard? You had to do it, I had to do it. I know a lot of women who want to be taken seriously who had to do that, but we're, we're relinquishing a part of our personality and that is not cool, that is not okay. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, li- listening that you talk and, and Duffy, that is a wonderful <laughs> idea. My, my wife was a... Uh, Division One basketball player too. Right. When I first date, I beat her playing. Yeah. I cheated. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's your story. Yeah, no. I cheated. I cheated. She I might have a different I story cheated. now. I cheated, but I'm not losing. Uh-huh. Three point blank. We, we, I'm cheating all that. But, but, but I know. But, but, but it really speaks to that kind of hard work and that dedication of saying it's bigger than just uh, my skill set. It really has to go beyond that. And so I think to your question, I get. I think that what people see, uh, we we are so our our attention span is so short, mm-hmm. is that we want to we want to do a Instagram look and say we understand the book, mm-hmm. and you can't do that. You got to go deeper and deeper. And so I, it's not enough forums where you can say that, and so people can really hear that because that is a very that, that's a very deep uh, understanding to be able to say I had to work hard yes. and not become a gimmick uh, and because and then and then that also gives you room to play hard and to be who you are that's very different I don't I don't know a whole lot of folks that can that that, that say it like that but I thank you for saying it and my get you. you you can keep on going out we we, we respect your social butterfly too we, yes we rocking with you so you good <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. it was about to be about Duffy but uh, you just yeah, yeah, no yeah, I yeah, love yeah, it you know, no you were, I, you, I you, can you jumped in so we had to make sure you were you were good but but let me let me ask you something so with the DJ feel being being now littered with the the men and with the idea of um, so many young ladies kind of flaming in and saying, I want to be a part of it. Do you carry a responsibility in your mind? Do you say, there's some things I got to teach people? Are you, do you look at it like that? Or are you saying, I got to find a, I got to keep myself going? Or are you a mentor? Or how do you look at it? I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, a lead by example type person. Okay. Um, but I do also um, take my time out to speak to the men and the women, DJs and artists that are entrepreneurs that want to ask me a question. You know, I'm I'm always available. I'm always wanting to to motivate, to inspire. Um, you know, and a lot of the the DJs here from Dallas, which is is crazy, is I a lot of the girls that I would see in the club, I I saw them starting to DJ, and none of them have reached out to me, and and it and it blew my mind. But instead of me saying like oh, why they didn't reach out to me and take it in a negative way. I kind of looked at it as maybe they think I'm too busy or maybe they think that I don't, you know, um, I, would, I wouldn't have time to talk to them. Mm. So every time I see an, a, fe- a female DJ in Dallas, like DJ, I, I come up to them and I say, my door is always open. Reach out to me. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. You know, if whatever you need from me, I'm here, you know. That's good. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's and, wonderful. And, you know, we see that the times have shifted with George Floyd, with Ahmaud Arbery, with all these things that have happened, which are a part of a bigger narrative that we are always dealing with. Do you see yourself as a person that can that can be involved in a movement? Do, do you does your voice lend to that, or are you saying? I, I love that lead by example. Or are you saying that your the movement is what you have done in your in your life? Or how how do you how do you kind of reconcile? So with everything those? going on in the world right now, um, I've actually been spending a lot of time learning more about my history okay. and um, events that happened that I didn't learn in school because it's crazy. Up till now, I. Th- a lot of things that I thought I knew about black history is I have a lot of information that was missing. Yeah. Um, 
things like uh, the Tulsa uh, massacre, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the, the the town that was in New York that's now covered by Central Park. Um, there's a, um, uh, another uh, town in Washington that had um, all black Republicans and, and a black news building and their own grocery stores and they had everything and they were ran out of town mm -hmm. and killed by KKKs. And um, looking back at all of these black figures that owned businesses and owned their own stores and news uh, news platforms and everything, seeing all of that ownership they had in, in the 1920s and some go back even before that, why um, are more African Americans not owning and having more ownership? And I think a lot of it has to do with um, we're not getting taught that. You know, my, my none of, no one in my family owns a business or owns anything. It was not till I graduated college did I see that my peers were entrepreneurs. And that's what sparked entrepreneurship for me. And I, I had a weekend here in Dallas that was um, a Duffy weekend, and it was all geared around female entrepreneurship. And that weekend was amazing. I had five of my friends who were all black female millionaires off of being entrepreneurs. They came and they spoke to the crowd, and it was just powerful, and it was amazing. And the next phase for Duffy is ownership. You know, and it. so everything going on now is just further iterating to me that I want to have ownership and I want to teach my kids ownership. Mm -hmm. This is, um, you're giving me goosebumps and I will tell you why. Um, this word entrepreneurship, to me, you know, when I was a little girl um, and I, my, I left my native Senegal for the first time ever when I was around seven, uh, went to Germany for the first time, that's where, we land, that's where I landed first. And I, I came to Germany and I looked around, I'm like, how come they have this? And, and back home, we don't have, and what I meant by this was these roads, these big buildings, and I mean, this easiness of life that prosperity affords, right? Mm -hmm. So um, eventually I went on the long journey of searching why. Why are we, why some countries like mine are poor and others like uh, Germany, France, the United States are rich while they're rich. And eventually, I quickly had to put two and two together, um, because in one in in, the, in these other countries, they allow um, it's easy for people to be entrepreneurs, to create wealth, to be wealth creators. Where in my country, it's not. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is this, this notion of economic freedom. We have less economic freedom in African countries than we have in countries that are rich. That's why they're rich, because yeah. they allow the entrepreneurs to build wealth. So. That's why entrepreneurship to me matters so much. But you said something so important, and then Duffy, here I have a question for you, because I really think that if we're gonna be serious about where do we go from here, as black people in America and actually in the world, I sincerely believe that this black skin of ours is not respected, why? Because when you look at the mass of black people, whether it's the black people in Africa or black people in America, we happen to always be, as a group, some of us did very well for ourselves, but as a group, we still are majority poor, um, most African, uh, Afri the Africa, Africa is one of the poorest regions in the world, you know. So I do believe that actually, this the fact that this skin color of ours is looked down upon mm -hmm. has to do with are we economic powerhouses or not, right. and that goes to this ownership you're talking about. So for me, when you talk about the next step for me, Duffy, is ownership because I've understood how powerful it is, and as a matter of fact, it is nothing new to our ancestors, because us we had to go back to before slavery. I'm discovering that we had all of these thriving empires, you know, African empires, when we were doing, you know, even architecture was so amazing, mm -hmm. you know, really big signs of, uh, what do you call it, of uh, engineering yes. and craftsmanship. Yeah. But when the white people showed up, they didn't believe it was black people who did this. They said, no, 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 this is smart people who did this. It can't be them. But that's who we were. And we were doing business and we were trading, we're doing all of this stuff. So today, I've got a problem that the people who say they're for Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. the founders of Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. I agree with them in the, in the, for the meaning of Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Black lives, my life, your life, bishops and everybody in this rooms matter, in room matters. Black Lives Matter for sure. But then I have a big problem. When I look next at the Black Lives Matter mantra has, we want to throw capitalism under the bus. We are going to be anti-capitalist. You understand that anti-capitalism doesn't go with your notion of ownership, do you? Right. So please, Duffy, enlighten me. Because I don't know how we're going to make it. We want to supposedly be respected and take our, our rightful place in society. 
right. and tell the world Black Lives Matter, and yet we are going to be against this very powerful force that ownership is, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is, and by the way, all of that is allowed by capitalism. You cannot have entrepreneurship without capitalism. So please, Duffy, that's my question to you. That's my question to you, Bishop, because right now I'm really scared. Because where are we going to go from here? Because you cannot tell me you want one thing, but then you're going to reject the very thing that's going to get you what you want. Well, I, I mean, I, I really actually haven't seen much of the, much of that. Um, so I haven't really... On their website. If you go on their website, you see their principles. Oh. And uh, anti-capitalism is one of them. Well, hopefully not. I mean, I'm still going to just stay on my path of, of entrepreneurship and teaching my, my family and, and my kids that. And um, I just hope that people are doing like I'm doing. And like you say, going back and looking how our ancestors owned their own businesses so early on when they had so much stacked up against them. And a lot of times people don't do things or African-Americans don't do things like ownership because one, they're scared. And two, it's just a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. that if you knew the resources and and where you and and the money that you can get or the help you can get or maybe if you just maybe stop spending money on on jewelry and gucci and and expensive clothes and save like you'd be able to get you start with one property get you two properties and things like that i mean that's what i'm doing i i, I said that i'm i'm done buying designer things now if my man want to buy it that's another story but <laughs> i'm done buying designer things i'm done buying jewelry all my money now is going into savings and going into investing in in real estate because I have a lot of friends, black female friends who are very successful mm -hmm. off of, you know, real estate. And so that's just what I'm going to do now. As far as Black Lives Matter and capitalism, I'm not listening to that part, but I definitely support the movement. You know, black lives do matter. Yep. And I hope that all of this that's going on brings some type of change for, you know, my, my child. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, uh, my guess you have a great point. And I love how you frame that too, Duffy. It, it, it's our stances are never collective, total. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things that those that you love closely, you don't agree with on certain things. So you can have some differing opinions on that, and it's okay. And but the principle of Black Lives Matter works, and it's yep. true. And uh, am I anti-capitalist? No, because I believe what what you believe and what you believe that the there are ways that things can be done. This is what I think people are trying to say. That there's a big question of whether or not this system is fundamentally flawed. That's what the question is. And if the system is fundamentally flawed, how do you fix it? So I don't believe that the system is fundamentally flawed. I think that the system has some flaws in it that can be purified and made to live up to the ideals of um, the the the, the, a society that has this free enterprise. So I don't think it, you know, you trash the whole system. Um, but it is aggressive. It is intentional. It's all of that. So I think that's what people are. So Maggot, don't throw away your, uh, your we all in this together card yet because we're going we gonna to bring you back. No, no, no. Cause I, know, I know what you're saying. No, though. Bishop, I, I, to me, we're all in this together. And um, yeah. like I said again, Black Lives Matter. Absolutely, you betcha. You betcha. I've devoted my whole life to making sure that black lives matter. I understand. But um, it's going to be really hard if we throw out uh, the baby out of the bathwater. Right. If capitalism, it's going to be really hard. We, I think it won't, it won't. You can't even do it. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I don't think yeah, you right? can't do it without it. But but don't worry about this. We, we ain't going to do it all the way. Just. Trust me on this. Okay. We're going we're gonna to have a, diff, a different <laughs> pathway. Yeah, trust but, me. But, I got but, you. But, but, Bishop, where I come from, trust but verify. <laughs> <laughs> trust well, you can verify. I'm here. I'm here with you. Uh, but, but wait a minute. I want, I want to say a couple before, because I know we, we don't have all the yeah. time. With, I want to say a couple, couple of uh, last things. Okay. You are obviously much more than the picture. And though you have traveled around the world, you've done things, you, you're, you are... You have a detailed story. Does it bother you, or, or do you, or do, does it matter to you that some can only see the first picture, can only see that glimpse? Do you want them to know um, more? Yeah, I've actually, um, with my friends, have conversations about how I wish I could just show more of myself, more of my personality on mm -hmm. my Instagram, and honestly, not to. It was like the last two years I started posting my son. I really wouldn't post him that much because I just, 
I just felt like my child was in a place for my social media just because I'm more sexy with my DJing and stuff like that. But then I started posting my child and I get so many messages from mom saying like, man, I want me and my son to have a relationship like you. I can tell you and your son are so close and um, men like to see me training him in basketball and playing football with him. And um, I'm, I'm glad I did that. And so I'm glad I started showing my, 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 my relationship with my son on my social media. And, but I want to show more of my personality and, and do things like that. But whenever I turn on a camera and I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk to them today. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm just going to take a picture. Like, you know? <laughs> but, call, next time, call us. We have that, questions. That is actually a, a, something that is on my mind. Hopefully something I get better at is I feel like I feel like DJing is just a very small part of me. So if I can just show my personality and just bring um, you know everybody in with other parts of me, I feel like I would get even bigger. You know, But right. I'm, I'm working on that. I'm trying. Good. Well, I, th I think, Duffy, your entrepreneurship journey. Just yeah. like how you're gonna get into, you know, the real estate. Like yeah. The, take us on the journey as you as you're gonna go through it. Yeah, I've been yeah. saying cool. um, a YouTube channel. I've been thinking about doing a YouTube yeah. channel because I'm also very handy. I like to do a lot of things at my house, and <laughs> it's kind of weird because with my fiance, like he cooks, and like I'm the one changing light bulbs. Like I love it. I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like um, I'm very very handy. Like and um, so I just said I was definitely gonna start like YouTubing. So yeah, definitely whenever I uh, I'm looking for properties at the moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep y'all looped in. Maybe start a YouTube channel. That'd be cool. And, and I'm really telling cool. you, th this is fascinating, my guy, because I think that what Duffy represents is is evolution mm -hmm. and it's traveling in that transition process that most of us don't get to see out loud. That's right. We don't get to see the athlete turn, DJ turn, entrepreneur turn, uh, handy woman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's good. We all have a the Buffy role reversal. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a uh, new show. I, I patented that. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that it, it's fascinating. And what we want to be as a conduit for you, thank you for being this open and, yes. and this honest and uh, the depth is there. But, and, and I'm praying that your son and you and all that, you know, that you guys keep the keep this train of positivity going, especially in a moment where we need light. You are, you know, you have a light about you. You mm -hmm. have a, a truth about you. Thank you. Uh, and we call it the spirit. You know, your, the spirit is good. So that's a good thing. So, Meg, you know, I want to pray. So what you, what you, you, you want to say something to Duff? Because I, I know you, Meg. Um, I know her. No, I, uh, I know her. No, Go I have ahead, to say Anna. my favorite. No, 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 my favorite because oh well, you know me. I mean, I'm a sucker for children anyway, and oh. uh, you you do have such a beautiful relationship with your son yeah. based on everything I'm seeing on online. Yeah, and so I just wanted uh, Duffy you to share a few things um, with. Um, what do you feel like has worked for you and your son? Like, has what has worked for him? Like, um, as a mom, um, you know when. No one is here to give lessons to anybody else, but we're just here to share good practices, right? Mm -hmm. So what are your best free, best, you know, practices, good mom practices that um, you would recommend to any Whoop other mom kid. out there? No, <laughs> Beat them <laughs> down. No. <laughs> <laughs> like my daddy did, no, though. Like, <laughs> my daddy. Um, oh, okay, let's see. What advice would I give to the moms? Um, one, which um, I think some parents that uh, oh, wait, wait. Um, one, I think, uh, some parents, um, especially, I think I, I noticed that my, my, my parents didn't do this as much as just, just sometimes just sit down and just ask questions, you know, because you, you'll be so surprised what your kids tell you when you just take the time to just sit down and just ask mm. them random questions. How are you feeling? What are you thinking? How does that make you feel like, you know, what do you want to be? What inspires you? Um, how do you? view me as your mom. What mm. what can I do to be a better mom to you? Mm. And then that gets our conversations of I tell him what I think he could do to be a better son. And it, it actually makes my son, it, he, he gets excited from that. And my son is, he's so loving and sweet, but you know, it, it makes him want to do better with. I'm like, you know what? Make me feel like you're a really good son. If sometimes when I'm I'm cleaning the house, if you just come and ask me, can I help? Mm. You know, because sometimes it's, they're, they're children. Oh. If you don't teach them, then oh. they don't know. So if you are cleaning the house and you let your son just walk past you every day and not do anything, then learn. that's what they're gonna do. Um, I also think that um, with the parents that are young like me, um, they're they they're making their kids grow up too fast mm. and. 
that kind of is, is weird for me because being around other um, celebrities and other uh, people who have uh, that are young, like my age, and that have kids, like they let them listen to cuss music, they let them cuss, they let them like uh, see things. Like people on my Instagram, like you're twerking on Instagram, but what about your son? I'm like, my son is nine. He doesn't know what Instagram is. He doesn't want to be on Instagram. He doesn't ask me about Instagram. I don't know why a nine-year-old would be on Instagram, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, I just keep him as a child. We talk about child things. I I, I just keep him in a, what they used to say, keep him in a child's place. I think um, younger parents right now aren't doing that, and they're growing their kids up too fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that's a positive thing. Um, mm -hmm. Then I would say the last thing that I do with my son that some other people had told me was really interesting is when I speak to my son, I only speak to him in entrepreneurship and ownership. So, you know, I do that's encourage good. him. Uh, for education, but I don't say, well, when you get a job, where are you going to work? It would like, I'm like, what business do you want to own? Mm. You know, um, in my home, I have an office. My fiance has an office. My son has an office. You know, so that. he sees both me and my fiance are entrepreneurs. So we're always at home. So I'm just giving him that example of entrepreneurship. And honestly, as I'm learning things about ownership, I'm very new to learning things about ownership, but I'm teaching it to him. Even at nine, you know, we had a realtor come over to the house uh, yesterday and he was like, who is this lady? And I said, let's sit down and talk to her about her job. And I was asking her questions and asking her about properties because she's helping me find properties. And my son was just learning, you know, so... Those are three things that I do with my son that I would give advice to other people. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. And then, and then before we pray, yeah, yeah. Um, before we pray, um, Duffy, what do you want to tell any, because that's probably who's going to be watching us, you know, somebody's out there, 12 years old, 14 years old, 14 years old, 16, 18. Um, what do we tell these people about how um, do you prepare yourself to be a, a Duffy? You know, what... Uh -oh. uh, What do you have to do? What do you have to start doing now if you're not doing it already? Um, well, uh, you know, one thing, like I was telling you before with my uh, background, is just, you know, just having discipline. And so really, first, let's find your goal. Let's find your dream. Let's find what you want to do. And right now, if you're, you're 15, it's going to change when you're 20. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to change when you're 25. And it's going to change when you're 31. And that's okay. But setting a goal and then making those steps to accomplish a goal and then making a new one and setting the steps to accomplish that next goal, um, that is something that will keep you on the same track. Um, be motivated. Um, don't be easily swayed by your friends who want to go out and party and do this or do that. If you have a goal, if something you want to do when I was learning how to DJ for a year straight I didn't go out I was at home I would go to work come home and put my son to bed I would teach myself how to DJ at night I was self-taught I learned off YouTube so don't don't use an excuse of I don't have any money or I can't do this or I can't do that of reasons why figure it out why you know don't make up excuses for yourself because the world is not going to have an excuse for you you know so work hard figure it out set your goals set your steps and then accomplish them That's pretty good. DJ Duffy learned off of YouTube. Self-taught YouTube. <laughs> I'm just telling you the Were truth. you DJs and say, hey, I'm Duffy, how'd you do truth. it? I went to Craigslist. Unbelievable. I yeah. bought DJ equipment. I had one lesson with DJ ASAP. And then the rest I taught, I was YouTube instructors. I love it. I love, I love it. DJ Duffy. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Dallas is on. No. <laughs> no, man, this is wonderful. You're, you're, uh, you're very unique, mm -hmm. very, very inspirational, mm -hmm. but practical. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It means a lot. And, and I really think that this vibe is a lot about uh, entrepreneurial spirit, but it's also principled. It's principled entrepreneurship. That's right. Yeah. Because I like that, you know, because I, I agree. Certain things are does some thing, certain things are children. They cannot dissect and digest those hard things. And mm -hmm. so we all got to grow into our next. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being willing to be vulnerable with us. Thank and you. I hope we didn't get on your nerves. Oh, I had a great time. This was yeah. easy. I thought we were going to talk some more. Oh, well, <laughs> we would have loved to keep you. Yeah, you know, they, you know we can back. keep talking. <laughs> Bring up the music, please. <laughs> Not that I want to, no. <laughs> actually, actually, there is a request no, out there. No, no, no there is no, a request. No, I'm not doing it. I, the bitch ain't gonna no, be not on from that. you, Bishop, not from you. Mm, We have a request for Duffy, Duffy to do I'm some not twerking. Ah, oh, oh, no, 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 no,
We ain't doing no twerking. I finally got an interview she can see. All right, so let's keep it that way. No twerking, man. You did all that in five minutes. You know what? Yeah, she was like, oh. Yeah, let's do twerking. Yo, let's pray for us. Let's pray for us. That's the social butterfly side. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do that when she, 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 you see her do it when you pay. I'll get now. you in trouble faster than you can see your name. Yeah. Come to a concert. Yeah. I got you. I'm going to get you tickets. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But look, back to the <laughs> real, real landing this plane. Thank you. I do want to pray for you. Is that okay? Yes, yes. please. And pray for this uh, moment. Pray for what God's doing in your life. God, first, thank you for an awesome experience, but for an awesome person who has so much to give and so much uh, road ahead. Let her steps be ordered, her mind stay open, and even those entrepreneurial ventures that she attempts to do, let them be fruitful so she can see the harvest from the seed. Let her son be protected, nothing happen, no harm. Let mm -hmm. him come up knowing that love is here and the challenges can always be solved mm -hmm. if you're on his side. Bless those who are surrounded in a circle and those that will be drawn to her so mm -hmm. that she can lead by example, mm -hmm. keep us connected and keep this going and growing. And those who are in stress right now, mm -hmm. tell them that relief is coming because there are answers. We pray and it is so. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. No, thank, thank you, you Duffy, for being so much.